the procession waving white handkerchiefs as they await the Holy Father, Concelebrants Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. And here leading the procession, a young man and a young woman in traditional Filipino dress carrying the Magellan Cross and Santo Nino. A word about those later. Let's begin to prepare ourselves to celebrate with our Filipino brothers and sisters the arrival of Christianity on those blessed islands. celebrated in Italian, English, and Tagalog, and will follow the fourth Sunday of Lent. We now see our Holy Father with the concelebrants, former Metropolitan Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagalog, Cardinal Angelo de Donatis, the Cardinal Vicar of Rome, who is responsible for the pastoral care of the Filipino community here in Rome. which we saw being carried in procession is a replica of the cross planted by Ferdinand Magellan in April of 1521 on the island of Cebu. The actual cross is preserved in a chapel next to the, in the minor basilica of Santo Nino in front of Cebu's city center. The actual cross is encased within another, it's believed. Others believe it may have been destroyed. However, it is a wonderful manifestation or reminder of the arrival of the faith in the Philippines 500 years ago. And Santo Nino, the statue we saw being carried, originally thought to have been brought by Ferdinand Magellan 
dark wooden statue measures approximately 12 inches high, carved in the Flemish style. Globe in his hand with a cross on top with elaborate vestments. A collection of vestments, clothing, and other jewels have accumulated over the years donations from devotees. Paul VI, Pope Paul VI granted a canonical coronation of this statue in April 1965 on the 400th anniversary of when the statue was rediscovered after the death of Ferdinand Magellan at the hands of locals in 1521. The oldest church in the Philippines, the minor basilica of Santo Nino, is where this statue is now housed. And it's believed that the, stat that the basilica was built over the, where the statue was found. Now prepare ourselves to begin the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And we're invited to recall our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. First reading will be proclaimed in the morning. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, 
practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants to the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.